Dallas has a problem. Actually, lots of cities do. We have a disproportionately high amount of concrete. And that means temperatures here can be 10 to 20 degrees higher. Cities like Phoenix, Las Vegas, Denver, and DC are all dealing with the same thing. You're gonna have to incorporate green space into it. If not, really severe problems will continue thanks to something scientists call the urban heat island effect. The city's owned this property since 1909. In the decades since, this area has boomed. Now, highways, apartments, and skyscrapers cast shadows on what used to be an empty paved lot. There was a railroad going through it. There used to be housing here. There were streets. It was an auto impound up until, I think, the late 80s, early 90s. I can't remember. And then the building burned down, and then it sat vacant for a while. That's when Stephen Smith and James Jeffers got a hold of it. They served in the Army together. And when I first met them, they were onto something good. We want to plant a little bit more of the plant in the ground. They created a nonprofit called The Farm that taught other veterans coming home from war how to grow their own food. Dirt has such a healing effect in farming and just working side by side. The more of the stem you plant, the more roots you get. The silver lining is the farm's doing way more than just helping veterans. It's combating a hot problem. Take a look at this map. It shows average daily temperature. All the reddish colors around downtown mean it's hotter there than in the suburbs, colored in more mild blues and greens. In one image, this is the heat island effect. We absorb lots of heat during the day, and it sticks around during the night. There's a like a dome over this city that has the heat here. And even between downtown and where I live, it's about a five degree difference a lot of times. You can go to the outlying suburbs as much as 15 degrees. The temperatures vary that much in other cities too. Studies say Phoenix, Louisville, Kentucky, Denver, DC, and Albuquerque, New Mexico have some of the highest differences between the urban core and the rural suburbs. And that difference in some cases can exceed 20 degrees. I hopped on Dallas's old school trolley line, which loops through most of the city center. I can't help but notice what all these people have been telling me. There really is concrete everywhere with very few trees and virtually no water. Those things, which many other cities have, help curb heat island effects. Nothing but asphalt and concrete around here. So. Originally, the, I, I, I told you the idea was to tear up all the asphalt and, and concrete and then fill it in with dirt. When the city had to test the lot, they found a certain number of contaminants. They said, this is the way you have to remediate it. And then you take that cost to someone that does that and they come back with a million, million and a half, whatever it costs to do it. Unfortunately, that was gonna be way too much. Since the team couldn't get rid of the asphalt, they basically built a green space on top of it a layer of clay for drainage, then compost and manure, then topsoil. If you're really interested in becoming an urban farmer, you can scale up from what we teach you here and do your own thing. What makes this farm so important isn't just the food it's growing, but actually where the food is growing. What's underneath the dirt? Right now we're about three feet above the pavement. As we add more and more and more material, this will get taller and taller and taller. While Dallas's heat island problem isn't the primary concern at the farm, what they're doing here is helping. It's all part of the bigger picture. I mean, in the heat island effect, we're worried about these buildings around here. They reflect heat, and then like the surface we're standing on is concrete. We have a disproportionately high amount of concrete in the city. In 2017, the Texas Trees Foundation conducted a heat management study. It was one of the first comprehensive looks ever at a major city. It said planting just 250,000 trees would start cooling temperatures here. And most importantly, it said those effects combined with using reflective building materials could reduce deaths caused by heat island effects. Using 2011 statistics, the study estimated deaths would decrease from 51 to 40, a reduction of more than 20%. You can literally stand on the dirt where the green space is and stand on the asphalt 50 feet away and feel a difference in temperature. Dallas has tried to help itself. 
it built a deck park on top of an interstate, which not only added green space, but also covered the paved roadway underneath. It worked so well, the city's already started building a second deck park in another popular area of town. You know, awareness is important. Like, I was not aware of a real problem. I knew it was there and people talked about it and that was for them to figure out. And for me to be part of that solution now was definitely not on my radar 10 years ago, but now it is. <laughs> As awareness for all this grows, so does Dallas. Development here is booming. Need proof? The North Texas region has more construction cranes than anywhere else in the country. And each of the buildings they're working on just add more concrete. Scientists say trying to reverse the heat island effects here could decrease temperatures by as many as 15 degrees. That would turn much of the red on the temperature map to milder blues and greens. It's creating a green space here in the middle of the city. We need more, for sure. Environmentalism, I look at it a whole different way now, you know? It's not hippy-dippy. It's not granola. It's just important. <laughs>